Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are about to start our service. Let us prepare our heart as we are about to, uh, to start our service now. So, a very good evening to all of us who are worshipping with us uh, in the sanctuary. And also, uh, welcome to those who are worshipping with us through Zoom and through YouTube. We also see a lot of uh, young people and also those who are, came back to, from our station. I'd like to specially welcome all of you to Wesley Methodist Church, Alasta Worship Service. Let us stand uh, for the call to worship. Let us do it responsively. O oh Lord, your law brings life, and we meditate on it day and night. Your word is a rich stream of living water, and we would immerse ourselves in it. You bring forth fruit in due season, and establish the work of our hands. Who is light, our God, the one whose ways are full of life? Let us uh, come together and pray the opening prayer. Let us pray. We draw near to you, O God, source of all understanding, and ask you to draw near to us. Teach us your wisdom from above, that we may bear good fruits in our lives. Root us beside the streams of your wisdom, that the green leaves of our goodness, fed by your insight, may not wither. Fill us with your spirit and your word that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Please be seated. Now we will go in the time of uh, uh, worship, led by Mr. Kui, and after that, uh, intercession by our sister Daisy. I would like to start this time of praise and worship by reading Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created, and He established them forever and ever. He gave a decree and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling His word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. From this psalm, definitely thousands of ways and thousands of tongues are praising God all the time. So let us also rise and join in this praise of our Lord. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that beats our sorrows cease. This music in the sinner's ears, this life and health and peace. He breaks the power of cancer sin, He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest sin. His blood a will for me. Glory to God and praise and love be ever, ever given. By saints below and saints above, the church in earth and hell. Glory to God. Glory to God and praise and love ever, ever given by saints below and saints above the earth and heaven. Truly, we praise God most of all for our Lord Jesus who came to die for us and to rise again. Let's lift up our voices. Lord, we lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth. To show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yes, Lord, we do. Lord, I love to sing your praises. We praise you, O Lord. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the cross to the grave, my death to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art Then sings my soul My Saviour God to thee How great thou art How great thou art When I think that God His Son not sparing 
send him to die. I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul. My Savior, go to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Yes, Lord, how great You are! Then sings my soul, My Savior, go to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation, and take me joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art yes then sings my soul then sings my soul, my Savior, go to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior, go to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Yes, Lord, we thank You that we can proclaim how great You are because of Your great love for all of us that we can gather this evening to praise You and to worship You, to remember the wonderful works that you have done for us, that we can join all of your creation to praise and honour and worship you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Pass the time to Daisy. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Let us all join our hearts in prayer, in intercessory prayer. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father God, you are sovereign. You are worthy of all praises and adoration. Thank you that in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we see your love, mercy, blessings, and provision. You, O oh God, are our protector and provider, and your faithfulness endures forever. As we continue in the attitude of prayer, may you hear us as we humbly bow before you. Your word in Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Let us feast on you and find nourishment for our souls. You are the light of the world. 
let us follow you and be your beacon of light to the darkness that surround us. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Let us love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We confess that some of us often fail and falter in our walk with you. We have not spent enough time reading, meditating, and connecting with you. We allow other distractions to take us away from you. Please forgive us, Father God. Help us, Father God, to be disciplined, to do our regular quiet time with you, and soak ourselves in your presence, and to develop a strong desire to spend time reading your word. Illumine our hearts and minds, speak to us, and help us to hear clearly from you. Teach us to be obedient to your word and command so that we would be God-fearing. Help us to sanctify ourselves and live holy lives that are pleasing to you. Help us to be mindful of our words, deeds, and actions. Clothe us with the full armor of God so that the devil will flee from us. And anoint us with the fruit of the Spirit so that we we will feel the heartbeat of the poor, sick, and needy, and reach out to them and help them in whatever way we can. Help us to live a significant and purpose-driven life so that we will bring honor and glory to your holy name. The first part of GE 15 is now over. Thank you for fair weather throughout the whole country. Thank you that there are no floods and monsoons, that people throughout East and West Malaysia are able to go to the specific voting centers to cast the votes. And now, as the whole country, nation is waiting for the results to be announced, may your will, your purpose, and your sovereign plans be accomplished. We pray against malpractices cheating, and foul play in the counting of ballot papers. We pray for good and favorable election results. We plead, O oh Lord, that all those evil, vile, and corrupted MPs will be voted out. We pray that you will put candidates who are clean, responsible, people who are honor honorable, has integrity, loves the country and who has the quality and ability to lead our country back on track. May this general election bring a change to Malaysia. May all those corrupted leaders who thrive on race and religion to suppress and oppress the peoples of Malaysia be wiped out completely. We pray God that this country will see good governance and rule of law to be restored back to the country. We pray that all government machinery, namely the judiciary, police, MACC, army, and all other civil departments to function without fear or favor. We pray for law and order to be restored. We pray that investors who left will return so that our economy will revive and boost up and add value to our dwindling ringgit. There will be peace, harmony, prosperity, and Malaysians from all walks of life, all creed and color, to live happily and harmoniously together. We also pray for journey mercies for everyone who are traveling back to their destination after the long weekend. May their trip back to vote be fruitful and they will see Malaysia rise up once again and the beginning of a new dawn, new hope, and a new era. So God bless Malaysia, and all these we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us stand to recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us uh, prepare our heart as we worship God with our tithes and offering. Let us pray the offertory prayer. You are the generous one, full of mercy and goodness for your creation. Grant that this gift may reach those who need your love and welcome. Bring about a harvest of goodness through this gift sown in peace. Amen. So for those in the sanctuary, let us come to the front uh, to give our tithes and offerings, starting from my left, and we follow by row by row. Then for those who are worshipping with us through uh, you, uh, Zoom and YouTube, do consider continue to give our tithes and offering through online banking. The details are given in this uh, slide. The church uh, bank is a CIMB bank, and the name of account, Wesley Methodist Church, the number account 800-640-7276. And do uh, inform our treasurer, Ms. Bock, through phone number or email uh, of your offering, stating your name and the purpose of the offering. Let us stand for the doxology. be seated. So allow me to bring uh, our church family news and the scripture memory verses. So for the month of uh, November, we will focus our memory verses on God is our hope, taken from Psalm 62 verses 5 to 6. So let us read uh, these verses together from Psalm 62 verses 5 to 6. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. So as we memorize these few verses, these two verses, it's good if we can meditate with the help of these few questions. In time of distress, in whom can we find hope? And what is His attributes that give us this hope. Let us look into the family news. So if you and your loved one uh, would like to be prayed for, do contact our pastor, uh, the RCC members, or the care group leaders. All of us will be happy and glad to pray together with you. This is our church uh, weekly calendar. So 
just focus on few. Monday, there will be MW meeting. Wednesday, on the second Wednesday of the month, there will be praise and prayer meeting. And on Friday, there are two activities. So, actually three. From 9.30 to 11.30, there will be English class and also church school for children. And from 9.30 to 11.30, also we have English class and together with MYF meeting for youth. And Friday, 8 p.m., there will be the Chinese worship service and Saturday, 7 p.m., English worship service. So all these two worship services will be via Zoom, YouTube and in person. So this is a special... Uh, a seminar that's coming up on 3rd of December, seminar by uh, Brother Jason Fong, uh, titled Parousia, The Second Coming of Christ. So it will be on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So if you are interested, do register with um, Brother Tiam Hock, uh, telephone number given, and this seminar is organized by our Christian Education Committee. So continue to stay safe and continue to move forward to God. Now we have a special time where uh, our brother Chiu Yi Hong, eh, he will share his testimony on his ministry uh, with SU and also after that followed by prayer illumination uh, by Sister Doreen and the scripture verses and followed by Dr. Lee for the sermon. <coughs> Hello. I assume everyone can hear me. I trust in the PA people. Hi everyone, I'm Yi Hong. If you don't know me, if you're new there, uh, I'm Yi Hong. I was born and raised in Alostar, Wesley. And I just left two years ago to come to PJ to work for Scripture Union full time. Right? If you look at my screen here, it says Scripture Union in Malaysia. Uh, we are working towards scripture union in Malaysia. Right now, we are actually three separate registered entities in Malaysia. We have scripture union Peninsula, Malaysia, scripture union Sabah, and scripture union Sarawak. Yeah, I, I am part of scripture union Peninsula, Malaysia. Right, so this is my team in Peninsula, Malaysia. Uh, this is arranged from right the youngest to left the oldest and i'm right in the smack in the center i'm 30 years old so it's very good to see that more young people are going into full-time ministry not only in scripture union but in other organizations as well and this is this includes some of our sarawak staff i think all of them are here yeah so our mission is to impact students with god's word and how we do this is we partnering with schools and churches and other Christian organizations such as X, what's the X Alpha, uh, and churches like X Church, DUMC, and we do this through various programs. And our target group is youth and children from ages seven to eighteen. And we are separated into different regions. Now we call them regions. We used to have youth ministry, children ministry, sports ministry, bigger and engagement ministry. But now we are going to restructure, we call us regions. So in the northern region, there's a team and central region, there's another team. And Sarawak is a different entity, different registered entity, the Sarawak region and Sabah region. So SU Peninsula Malaysia, we have a team in Sabah. So that Sabah team is under SU Peninsula PM and there's a different SU in Sabah also, but they only have a bookstore. They don't have ministry work. So SUPM sent a team to Sabah from Sabah itself. Okay, so in Scripture Union, we have different ministries. We have children ministry. Uh, let's not read that war of text. We have youth ministry. We have Bible engagement ministry where we teach people how to read the Bible, how to engage with the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the goal of this ministry is so that youths and children can read the Bible on their own daily to engage the Bible to know more about God. This is their aim. And sports ministry uh, is a relatively new ministry. It only started about one, one year, 
one plus one year and one month plus, and it is mostly evangelistic. They go to mostly primary schools and every week they go to this one school and through these weekly sports activities they they start to evangelize to students. They run camp, a sports camp for the school. Right? And this is how they reach out to students. And we have some resources as well. Uh, on the left, the most left, you see that Introducing Jesus is a series of four books. Auntie Pelan used to, I'm not sure if she's still doing it now, but she used to run MRF with those four books. And on the right, you see the green color book is a book for new believers. So all these books, we have one copy for students and a different copy for the leader, for the person guiding the student to run through the book. So all these things you can find through our website, su.org.mine. And that little cute children, childlike drawing on top, you see that's called Godversation. It's for very young children. It's for parents to read God's word with their children. It's very simple. And then you have some questions to ask for the children to think about the passage that they have just read. Also available on our website. And we partner with different organizations to reach out to schools. If you can't see, I'll read it for you. We have TCF, NECF. We partner with Menagis Churches, Boys Brigade and Girls Brigade. We actually have a lot of events with Boys and Girls Brigade. Uh, FGB Business Men's Fellowship. We have the Wesley, Wesley Schools, Wesley International Schools all, all over Malaysia. We have Haggai Faith Comes by Hearing and so on. So now I'll show you some photos of the things that I personally have done. Okay, you see me behind there, raising my hands, scratching my head. Okay, this is a CF in an international school. And this is only four students. Sometimes we have two only, right? This is one of our smaller ones. We used to go a lot to government schools for their Christian fellowships. We still go, but not as much after MCO. We seem to be moving towards more international schools and more private schools. That's just the trend. This is a different international school. There's a Japanese boy at the back. And these are rich, rich people. This is a different international school. Over here, you see the older, older students from five and from four, which is year six plus year twelve and year eleven, year eleven and year ten, right? And this is just year ten and year eleven. They split because the school is quite big, and the hall is not big enough to fit everyone, so they split the chapel service into three sessions. Right? This is a chapel service. Every student have to go. And what we face is that because they are forced to go and if they are not Christian, they go there just to sit and not pay attention. That's the thing we have now. This is a different school, Wesley Methodist School KL. I'm not sure if this is the international one or the private one, but one of the Wesley schools in KL, this is 1,000 students. Uh, chapel, they are forced to go there also. And this is our involvement with GB. This is GB, it's a co part of the co in school, St. Mary's Secondary School. This is about 200 plus students. It's a girls' school, so it's all girls. And we run things with them. This is a uh, boys' brigade and their uh, boys' brigade girls' wing in Kampa, ACS. So not only in central region, we sometimes also visit other regions. This is our Kampa trip. We not only go to churches in Kampa and in Ipoh, we also go to different schools and different boys' brigade and girls' brigade as part of our ministry trip to Kampa and Ipoh. And this is a training that we run for Wesley School in Malaysia, in Peninsula, Malaysia. I don't know if Sabah Sarah has. So these teachers, they are BK teachers in these Wesley schools. They come from Penang. There's one, there's one school in Ipoh, there's one school in KL. So this Teachers, they come, they learn how to teach BK, they learn how to run their chapel services in their own respective schools, and they give us one slot for to train these teachers so that they can reach out to their own students. We also run sports events. 
as an evangelistic event. So the school CFs, school Christian fellowship, they send their teams. And these CF students, these Christian students, they invite their non-Christian friends through their CF to join their CF. And then only they can come for this competition. Right? So it is one of how we do evangelism through schools, through sports. And we also run camps. This is Trinity, Penang, the NYF. This is a camp we run for them. They invite us to run camps also. And we also teach Bible, Bible engagement to some shelter homes. This is an orphanage in KL. So we also run Bible teaching classes with them. Other than that, we also visit different churches. This is an uh, Anglican church in Ipoh. Yes, with a big nice cross at the back. And this is a different church. This is Livingstone Methodist Church. This is Kepong Wesley. And we go to these churches to, like what I'm doing right now, we preach. I don't preach, but they, we preach and we share about our SU work. So this is how we partner with these churches. Right, that's all for me. No question and answer today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor, for your thank you. Good evening, everyone. Please join me in praying the prayer of illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This evening's scripture reading for our meditation is taken from Psalm 1. If you so wish to do so, please join me in reading the Lord's word together. Verse 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi everyone. Um, actually, this week is supposed to be track conference week. Huh? That's why I'm here huh? because pastor is not supposed to be here. And uh, I also didn't expect so many of you back because suddenly uh, it was announced that it is going to be election. So uh, I'm, uh, how to say, intimidated by so many of you here, <laughs> not prepared. <laughs> so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray for the Holy Spirit, the teacher, you, you who teaches us. Lord, illuminate 
our hearts and our minds, that we may come to understand and put into practice your word. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so we, I'm sure all of us like to have a blessed or happy life. And uh, there are, if you look into the net, internet, you've, or, or you look in the bookstores, there are so many books about it. So there must be something that everyone is looking for. However, it is actually found, the, the main uh, very important source uh, uh, is found at the beginning of the ancient prayer book of the Jews, that is in the Psalms. Right? So Psalms 1 is the one that uh, starts with the word blessed. And it is translated in the other translation, the more modern translation, as happy. All right? And uh, another version, NLT, says joy. Maybe a more uh, Christian uh, word to use. As you are aware, a large proportion of Psalms were written by King David, apparently 73 of them. But another large proportion, that's about one-third, 49, whose authors of the psalm are not stated. And in fact, if you look at Psalms 1, you will notice that it is not stated who is the author. All right? So uh, I would just like to highlight some things that uh, we can pick up from this psalm. Okay, I think I'll try and see whether I can uh, operate this. Okay, yeah. So we are at Psalms 1. Oops. Sorry, huh? this one. Okay. Is it big enough? Yeah, right. So I want to begin with looking at the core of the blessed life. If you notice on, on your left, uh, the blessed life is one that actually, if you note consistently, uh, is one that uh, have the most important emphasis is in the law of the Lord or God's word. Okay? Delight in the law of the Lord. On his law, he meditates day and night. All right? So in contrast, I don't know what else to put as not a blessed life. I think it's more of a worldly life. All right? One who walks in the counsel of the wicked. All right? So when you walk, actually, you actually seek yeah, advice, right? counsel or advice. In some version, it's advice. All right? Likewise, when you delight in something, you actually seek for it, right? Recently, my brother came from Canada and uh, he yearns to eat all the Penang food. So we were Googling. What are, where the, I, I have not been uh, eating in Penang, searching for all the Penang food uh, because I seldom go in the first place. Secondly, I also don't know where some of the good food are. So we were Googling around, looking for some of the good food like char kway teow and all that. So it depends on where you think is the best char kway teow, you will go for it, right? You will seek after it. Uh, so seeking is when you delight in something, right? In contrast, as you, as what you should not do uh, is not to walk, not to seek the advice of the wicked, means the, the, uh, the advice of the worldly, uh, the, those in the world, or stand in the way of sinners, actually of sinners. Right? So when you walk, you are seeking. When you stand, you actually stop. Right? When you stop, you stop to consider. All right? So here, if you look on the side of the being a blessed, you will notice that meditates uh, in Psalm 119 verse 15, uh, it says that meditate on your precepts, precepts also is the word of God, uh, and then consider your ways. All right? 
So consider, right? Means you will ponder more deeply. When you sit in the seat or company of mockers, it's another progression. You actually, you only non-stop, you actually join in already. All right? When you sit down and eat, you actually join in, right? So you actually join in and do what they do. So in Joshua uh, 1 verse 8, and it says, uh, when you meditate on it, means meditate on God's word day and night, so that you will be careful to do. When you meditate, then you will proceed to the doing part. All right? So it's very important that the core of the blessed life is based on God's word. All right? And how you, how you approach God's word. Okay? Uh, I, will, I will elaborate later as we go along. Because we know that God's word actually is the truth. All right? So in John chapter 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. All right? And Psalms 119, verse 6, uh, 160 says, All your words are true, and all your righteous law are eternal. It's not only true, it is eternal. It means it will not be, it's not changing, it's unchanging. All right? And more than that, God's word in Psalms 1950 says, My comfort in my suffering is this, Your word has given me life. It is life-giving. All right? And Jesus says in John 6, 33, The spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. All right? So God's word is not only true, it is unchanging and it gives life. All right? If you contrast on what you seek outside, you have to think very hard whether it's really true, whether it's unchanging, and whether it gives you life. Sorry. Okay. Then the psalmist goes on. He has been, he's been trying to compare. Eh? All right? So that's why I came up with this uh, chart. Lah, eh? He's comparing between the blessed life and the worldly life. And as part of the comparison, he gives us an imagery. All right? That also gives us a hint uh, how sometimes how to meditate. You have to use your imagination a bit. Right? So he gives the imagery. The blessed life is a life like a tree with fruits. It's not easy to find a tree with fruits along the river. So <laughs> just a small tree there. Compared to the worldly life is described as sh sharp, chaff. Sorry, my pronunciation may be off. Chef. Chef. <laughs> okay. So, I think we all know what a tree and a chef is, right? A chef is actually something that is not useful and is dead. So, Whereas you, you look at a tree, a tree is alive, right? And this basic uh, biology uh, lesson, the tree actually is alive and it produces fruits. Uh. It also has uh, what you call, uh, takes in sunlight and then uh, uh, takes, takes in the carbon dioxide and gives up oxygen. Of course, with the water coming in uh, from the tree. Whereas the chaff, you know, that is so light, you know, when they were going to uh, uh, what you call wino uh, and trashing, uh, it will blow, blow away. So you see that the characteristics is contrasted in this way. Uh. The blessed life is one that is alive. Actually, it is spiritual life we are talking here, all right? Whereas the worldly life, it is dead. So we know that as we 
as Christians, uh, we come to realize that we are only spiritually alive when we understand that we are all sinners in need of salvation. All right? And as we repent of our sins by accepting Jesus as our Savior and Lord that died for our sins and raised from the dead, we become alive. All right? John chapter 5, verse 24 says, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word, believes him who sent me, has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Whereas, as we have mentioned, the child has no, no life, right? It's something that is dead. All right, dead in sin, as in uh, Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you were used to live when you follow the ways of the world and that of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is at work in those who are disobedient. Okay? So the blessed life has life. We are alive in Christ. It has deep roots. All right? It has deep roots so that it is firm and secure in contrast the chaff definitely have no roots, so it is not firm and insecure. In Hebrews, we read this, we have this hope as an anchor for our lives. It is safe and secure and goes through the curtain of the heavenly temple into the inner sanctuary. On our behalf, Jesus has gone in before us and has become a high priest forever in the priestly order of Michel Sidek. So the chaff definitely has no roots. It is light and easily blown away. It, if you follow the trends and philosophies of the day, it changes with seasons and fashions and idea. So because it is not rooted in truth, which is only found in God's word. A tree yields fruit, right? Whereas a chaff, of course, there's no fruit, right? So a life that is lived according to God's word yields the fruit of righteousness. Psalms 119 uh, verse 9 asks, uh, how can a young man, I think it's not only young men, uh, it's old men or women as well, keep their way pure? Uh? Answer is living according to your word. However, we know that none is righteous, uh, none of us is righteous, but we are filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. That we find in Philippians chapter 1, verse 11. And Philippians chapter 3, verse 9 uh, continues, To be found in Him, not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. So this fruit of righteousness is also by faith. Although it is based on faith and not on what we do, but once we come to Christ, we need to pursue righteousness. Huh? Uh, 2 Timothy verse 2, 22 says, pursue righteousness, huh? remember? Okay, so we need to pursue righteousness and the spirit that is given to us helps us also to manifest the fruit of the spirit. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, we all know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is actually the growth in Christian character. In contrast, of course, there is no fruit of righteousness in the chaff. And the tree has leaves that does not wither, so it is resilient. All right? Of course, chaff has no, no leaf at all. And it's definitely not resilient, especially to times of difficulty. And definitely, as you look at the uh, uh, verses down, it cannot withstand the judgment of God, right? Because when God judges us, it is not on our own righteousness, but on the righteousness of Christ. So the worldly life, you will end up perishing. Whereas in the blessed life, you will be protected and prosper. So this is mainly in the area of spiritual life. Huh? Of course, when we live life according to God's word, we do prosper in 
other ways as well. I'm not saying that you only prosper spiritually. But the prosperity is not guaranteed in the material world because we are not focusing on the material things on this earth. Okay. So how do we actually um, be able to come to receive or to be able to experience this blessed life? I would call this the center of the blessed life. So the center of the blessed life, if you notice uh, as, as we read uh, the Psalms, uh, it is referring to the heart. All right? In Proverbs, we read this from 4.23. Uh, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for, for from it flows the spring of life. So we have already noted in verses one, uh, I'm sorry, verse two. Uh, we we need not only I mean need not only delight in the law of the Lord, but we need to meditate. Okay. So meditation um, helps us to connect the truth that is in our mind and land it in our hearts. That is the center, lah. Huh? affecting how we see life and relationships, suffering and sin, leading us towards God in trust and obedience. I think we, we realise that a lot of times, uh, we find it difficult. We know the truth in our head, right? But when, when, when we have difficulties or when we have problems, we find it that it does not somehow affect the way we act or we react because somehow it has not affected our hearts. Okay, so when we talk about meditation, sometimes, especially now, uh, meditation is quite a, how to say, a popular word uh, which is used everywhere. And uh, some Christians are a bit weary of meditation. So I'm here talking about Christian meditation on scripture. Uh. Okay, so just to, to emphasize that there is great differences uh, between the Eastern meditation and the Christian meditation. All right? The Christian meditation, the basic uh, difference is that we are filling our mind with God's word about his works, about the world he created. All right? okay? Whereas in Eastern meditation, you know, from Buddhism, Hinduism, yoga, and what sort of, uh, they are trying to empty their mind so that they have interior, sil interior silence, all right? They're trying to find peace in that manner, okay? So the focus is also very different. The focus, when we do Christian meditation, we are focusing on God and to know Him more intimately. Whereas Eastern meditation, the focus is on self. You are trying to, in a way, trying to find your true self in whatever uh, ways they, they, they recommend, okay? So that's the basic difference. So uh, just to clear the air and I say meditation, uh, okay? So I think you have seen me uh, sharing this uh, cycle many times, but uh, just to uh, emphasize that when we read God's word, we can hear God's word, you can hear, like now you're hearing me, yeah? okay? I think most of the time after that, you leave 70% gone already. Lah. All right? Then you can read, okay? And we encourage all of us to read every day God's word, okay? So more will stick to us. And we study. Uh, we do a lot of Bible study. So just now, uh, Yi Hong was saying, uh, I think the new word is not Bible study, uh, it's Bible engagement. When they talk about Bible engagement, they are talking about this whole cycle. All right? And when you write, actually, it helps you to remember better also. And it slows you down. Actually, writing, in a way, helps you. To, in, it's, it's like a process of meditation. Actually, meditation means to slow down. Okay, now I'm trying to speak slower. <laughs> okay. 
So you slow down to write, all right? And if you memorize, you are even taking it deeper into your mind. Actually, all these are in the mind, you know? Uh, when you meditate, it actually settles into your heart, okay? And it helps you in your prayer. Uh, actually, there is a lot of uh, people sharing about how to use scripture to pray. So it will help you in your prayer. And uh, the Psalms is actually a very, a very good resource of uh, learning to pray. All right? And the Hebrews or the Jews use Psalms a lot. And of course, the final aim of all this is not to increase the knowledge, but to apply it in our lives that can transform us. All right? So this is the whole purpose of uh, reading God's Word and uh, meditating, writing, studying, memorizing, and then applying. One definition of Christian meditation, the simplest I know, I have found, uh, this Robert J. Morgan, he's one who wrote a book on Christian meditation, on scripture meditation. He also wrote on uh, scripture memory. He says Christian meditation is the habit of pondering. All right, it means we use our mind to think deeply, picturing. You can actually use your imagination. And of course, the final result is practicing. All right? That is what we want to do. Okay. So many times, uh, a lot of times when we talk about meditation, we assume we all know what is meditation, all right, on God's word. Uh, some, one time I was talking to a, a Christian sister, huh? a, in fact, a very senior Christian sister, who saw me in the clinic, and then I, I, I suggested, uh, maybe we, you can also learn the practice of uh, scripture, memory, and meditation. Then he asked me, Doc, how do you do that? <laughs> then I suddenly realized, uh, I also don't have good grass. Okay? And that's why I'm trying to prepare this one to help myself also. Okay? So, just now I was showing you, reading, hearing, writing, and all that, it's like preparing tea. Eh? When you prepare tea, if you, if you hear only, you like one dip and then you take out the tea bag. Eh? I'm sure you won't like to drink that sort of tea, right? And then if you dip some more, maybe you read and you dip some more and then you take out, you, you study. And you dip some more, maybe you write. Eh? And you dip some more, maybe you, you go to memorizing. Eh? The tea is still not very good, right? You must leave the tea bag inside. All of us do that, right? We, all, we prepare tea, we don't just dip and dip and dip, right? We don't dip 20 times. We leave the tea back there. So meditation is like leaving the tea back inside a hot water, cup of hot water, and allow it to seep into the water and the glass. Of course, Sutan tells me uh, there's a time very good. But there's a, firstly, the water must be freshly boiled. Secondly, he got time one, uh, right? Ah, you cannot dip too long there. That's another matter. Lah. <laughs> okay. English, when you go to England, you will learn how to drink tea. Okay. So the other analogy is the cow chewing on curd. Means they, they chew and then they, apparently they got don't know how many stomachs. Uh, they rejudge out uh, and then they chew again. So the process of chewing on curd uh, is like the process of meditation. Also, when we talk about eating, uh, in, in, in the Bible also, there are a few verses of uh, description of eating the word of God. All right? When you eat, you chew, and then you allow the food to go in, and then you digest and absorption, absorb. Right? Uh, that part of absorb, absorption is the meditation, equivalent to meditation. So somebody described likewise, if you, we, here we don't uh, need fire, la, uh, what do you call, uh, fireplace, all right? Because most of the time we complain it's hot, we, we, we use aircon. But if you go abroad, then you appreciate the fireplace, right? So the difference between being warm thoroughly uh, and being warm 
and then just go off uh, makes a lot of difference. So like reading, studying, all that, it's just like you, you come and then you stop at the fireplace and then you move on. You don't linger there. When you linger there and allow the God of Word to settle deep into your heart, that is the process of meditation. So this is just some imagery to help us appreciate. So basically, there are a few uh, principles in meditation. Okay? We all need to start just like quiet time actually. It's part of your quiet time. All right? you, can, you have to select a quiet place in the beginning. All right? And of course, you have to set a specific time. And you start with prayer. Okay? Because you need God's help to understand and appreciate and also to ask God to remove or you give God all your cares and concerns. You find that when you come to be still, uh, you want to sit still and, and really concentrate and focus on His Word, uh, other thoughts come. Uh, many thoughts come. All right, I, I need to buy milk. For God to buy milk. <laughs> you know? Maybe I need to maybe I, I need to write something for my patient. I need to buy something or whatever. You know, all kinds of thoughts will come. Uh, all worries about our family, our children, you know. So you find that people who practice Eastern meditation, they find it very hard to actually silence their mind. All right? That's why they do all kinds of things to silence their mind. We, we are not doing that. We give God all our cares and concerns. And of course, if you need to do some things, on you, you have a paper and uh, around, uh, you just write down all the things you need to do so that it clear your, clear your thoughts from that. Uh. And then you start. So in, in reading and studying Bible, you, we encourage you to read a lot, right? Huh? Like reading the Bible through the year, wow, that you read so many chapters. Right? But in, in meditation, it is actually you narrow down, you try to select a few verses or even a verse. All right? So you narrow down what is needed. Each one of us may, may be in need of some some. Uh, God's word. Uh. So as you read, you will, you will, God will strike you that, or you can uh, find some words that, some verses that are helpful for your present need. And you, you, you select that verse or short passage. And then the stages of meditation may include this. Okay. So one of the things that you need to do with the word, with the verse, is to read it repeatedly, all right? And read it slowly. And read it with emphasis on different words at different times of your reading. So first time you read, maybe when we have a time, uh, I, will, I will just demonstrate a bit. Then you can read and emphasize on different uh, words. Or, you may read it in different versions, right? Nowadays, it's so, so easy, right? If we, if we read in NIV, we find, hey, I don't quite understand. Let's choose ESV. And maybe contemporary C, CEV or Good News Bible. Then you, you, you will be able to grasp the words and understanding better. So the phone is so helpful. Lah. But the phone is the greatest distraction, right? You can read anything else from one to another and you waste two hours. Okay, so the, the, other, the other thing you can do is actually ask questions. Uh, firstly, you have to make sure that you are in the right context. Huh? And uh, you can ask questions relating to the verse that you are reading and trying to meditate. Even... A per, more personal application, how does it relate to your present situation and what God is saying to you about himself and what he wants you to do in response to it. Writing it out is actually quite useful, although not many people like to write. Right? Like between me and Doreen, huh? <laughs> I prefer to write. She says, no, I don't prefer to write. I prefer to read it and memorize it. So different, different one of us. So these are all just suggestions which you find, which you may find helpful, 
All right? So you may start with word for word writing the scripture uh, the scripture verse. Or you may paraphrase as you as you read the word in the in in what you as you understand it. Or you may do a mind map. Right? I I'm I'm more a linear sort of thinker. I like I like things to flow like that, like that, like that. I see better in in uh, how to say steps. But some of you may, may see things in pictures, so you may like to draw or do illustration. And definitely, memorizing a verse uh, is very useful for meditation. As you notice, in the Psalms, uh, it says meditate on it day and night. Of course, you can take it literally, you do it in the morning and you do it at night. But actually, day and night means throughout the day. All right, it's throughout the day. How to be able to be conscious of God's word throughout the day unless you actually memorize it? All right, if you memorize it, then you can actually meditate on, on it throughout the day. And it's also very good to end the day with God's word so that when you sleep, you will have a restful, peaceful sleep. Because a lot of times we end the day by thinking of our problems. Okay, so one of the things that, um, if one of the things people say, la, and we all know it's true, la, if you know how to worry, okay, you actually know how to meditate. Okay, because worrying is thinking about a problem repeatedly. So meditating is thinking about God's word repeatedly. All right. And of course, as you meditate on God's word, you can ask God to help you to further understand and how to apply. But it also can lead you into naturally into prayer using the words that you have meditated upon. Okay. So I think in closing, huh? all right, so this is the stages and we end in a response. A response, of course, is not just praying, but also what God wants you to do, okay? So our memory verse uh, for this month, God is our hope. Uh, actually, we can use it if that is something which you think is helpful. You can use it uh, to start the process of meditating and learning how to meditate. Okay, so as you, maybe I'll just close by reading it lah, for you and as so that we will uh, have a sense of what meditating on God's word is like. Uh, okay, so let's just close this time as we close with God's word. We just ask God to illuminate our hearts as we consider and read through his word. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you will help us even as we read these two verses of your precious word. May it impact our lives in the way that you want it. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. So as you reflect on these words, maybe God is speaking to you regarding your current situation or He may be saying something to you
about what you need to find rest in Him. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you also for teaching us, reminding us that we need your word to go deep into our hearts and that we can meditate, think deeply regarding your word and spend time in your word that will impact deep into our hearts for all of it will flow life will flow and transform our behavior and our actions so lord we pray that you will help us to consider practicing what you tell us to do. So help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us arise. I believe God has spoken to us through the song we have sung. Uh, through the intercession, through the reading of the word, as well as through the sermon. And now let me offer you a moment for you to respond to God, after which I will close in benediction. Let us pray. May the Lord bless us with a deep desire for His Word and cause us to meditate on it day and night so that we may be like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now we may dismiss in silent prayer.